Hello, Jess Too Good here, and today I'm taking a look at the Lego Monkey Kid Pigsy's food truck set. This has 832 pieces, five minifigures, and retails for $70 in the United States. Now let's take a look at those minifigures. The first minifigure is the Monkey Kid. I stand corrected. I thought every set had the Monkey Kid with the Monkey King staff, but this set does not. The design of this is his work outfit for Pigsy's food store. The design does also come in the $120 Red Sun set and I think the Poly Bag. This doesn't have printing on the bandana like the one in the other sets. The face print is also one in those two other sets and only in those two other sets so far. You can see he has a much more shocked or determined angry look at the back. And he also has some nice back torso printing as well. Oh, and he also has accessories of a 1x2 print of a phone, which is nothing new. And this 1x2 print of the menu of the restaurant, which also appears in some other sets that's on a 1x2 plate as well. This set has an exclusive outfit for Pigsy, which the design for his outfit seems to be just his restaurant working attire. This design is different from the other Pigsy, which I think I said was exclusive to that Demon Bull King mech, but then I found out that's also an Ocean King set, or Ocean King? Ocean HQ, what the heck am I saying? The design for this also uses that red pitchfork that's in the other sets for Pigsy, an actual reference to the Journey to the West story. Also, there's a molded head that's exclusive to the Pigsy figure so far. Love how that is made with a stud at the top that you can just kind of put a lot of minifigure hat accessories, for example, like the chef hat they give you. So overall, very good minifigure. Oh, and he also uses mid legs as well, which was surprising to me when I got the sets. The next minifigure is Uncle Q-I-A-O. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. The design for him uses no new pieces. That torso was introduced in the city last year, if I'm not mistaken. It's been used sparingly, so it's not super common. He has a hot dog as an accessory, as well as a suitcase. The design for the face was the one from the fairground mixer, which you know what that means, alternate face, he's about to barf. And the set has two bull clones. They're clones, so I'm not sure which is which, but each of them have names. One of them is Snort and one of them is Grunt. So let's just say this is Snort. Snort has a mini stud shooter, which you could just push here, launches a stud. If you guys don't know how these new bull clones are, they have this really nice new helmet piece, which I love the shaping and everything there. They have a pole connection at the side where you could put the horns. And underneath, they use this translucent minifigure head, which is very nostalgic to me because I believe that was used in the Mustafar set, right? And even if I'm not a huge prequel dude, the 2005 Ultimate Lightsaber set is pretty nostalgic to me. Oh, and this is Grunt, I guess. The design for this does use a Nexonite's piece right here. Not the Technoblade. Got it right this time. And that actually appeared a lot in Nexonite's in that coloring. Again, this is the same design as that last bull clone. So there's three separate builds of the set with the food truck and then these two motorcycles. And we'll start with the namesake Pigsy's food truck. The design for this is the biggest food truck that Lego has ever released as far as I can tell. I mean, I'm thinking of that $20 food truck from Lego City that I liked a couple years back and maybe some Lego Friends ones. But as a whole, the design for this does have a lot more space than those. It's a lot more pricey, understandably so. I think that helps give more detail than say the city one has. But let's take a look at the food service area of the truck. And you can access that by opening up these side walls. This is present on both sides and how they built this up uses a lot of plates, but also a Technic beam connection to have the function of opening this up. Also, they use the same stickers on both sides, which has a lot of Chinese text. So if you can read Chinese, let me know what it says in the comments, but I'm sure it's just something along the lines of Pigsy's food truck. Either way, to lift these open, you can pull up from this little handle right here and access the interior of the food truck. The design on this side has the food service area. We seem to have some pork buns right there, some sauces, some more sauces at the back, butcher's knives, also a nice golden frog there. In this corner right here, there's even a little steamer, I think is the proper name, where they're cooking another pork bun. Actually, the more I think about it, they should have already been steamed. So I guess that's just a container to keep them steamed. I'm sure there's a specific name or it could just be basket or barrel. <laughs> Either way, inside, there's kind of hard to see a little stove top there. To get a better look at that stove top or what I think is more specifically a grill, just open up the opposite side of the food truck and you can see this is actually a two by four sticker on a two by four tile. Now there is a hidden side to quite a bit of few things in this set. I know it's not a Lego hidden side set, but I like all these hidden features. First off, you could trigger this one by pushing forward this Technic gear and it seems to unlock a secret button to launch some sausages or something. 
There's actually a whole other play feature of a stud shooter that this might be related to in universe. Over here, there's some little refrigerators or storage containers, whatever you want to call them. Heck, they could even be ovens, which unfortunately do not have anything on the inside. And I'm going to try to open that one since it's a hard reach. To the left over here, there's this door, which is supposed to be a refrigerator, but there's a hidden weapon rack right there. Weapon whack. Jeez, that was a pretty bad one. Either way, to get access to it, you could just easily pull it out since it's on a one by two jumper plate. And there's a gun on there. There's also a razor blade. Okay, or razor saw, whatever you want to call it. Put that back in place and you close that refrigerated door and nobody will suspect anything. And then at the top right here, there's a hidden door that opens up and it actually acts more as a panel, a control panel to kind of investigate this whole situation. So one side, you have the food service stuff. And then the other side, you have a whole freaking mission HQ. I love it. Behind the vehicle, we have a nice build using some studs not on top techniques with the swivel plates right here, one by four sticker tile. These right here are used throughout the set. It's the unicorn horn piece from Lego Kingdoms 2010. This is just not a good piece to integrate with build because you'll see, and you probably saw it before and you'll probably see it as I take a closer look throughout this vehicle as we continue, it falls off very easily. It's a very loose connection because it is a rubber piece. I don't know, I think they should just make a new piece at that point that's probably like a harder plastic or just not use that all together. But there are spikes throughout the vehicle. You can see them at the side, little wheels right here. And then at the front of the vehicle with this crazy fender. I really like this design. I just wish they didn't use these pieces. Though these are the most secure since you don't really get in the way of them as they're facing upward. And that front fender design can actually be moved downward like this if you wanted to make it push into other vehicles. You could also easily remove it, which I'm going to probably do to fit this into a Lego city, which I like that. And there's a one by two tile here with a sticker on it. There's also a little hot dog sausage at the front and this design for this uh, stickered piece of a hood can actually be removed. Inside revealing more sausages. Again, there's a lot of hidden parts to the set. This vehicle actually has driver's side doors, which is a rarity in Lego City. <laughs> you could open them up just with that nice door piece. There's also a sticker on there, also a side view mirror. And this is the same build on both sides, which is great. Now to access the driver's seat, there is an easy way, which is just removing this roof up here. The roof design itself, I quite like the use of the megaphone or old blaster piece in red, but you can lift it up. And on the interior, there's enough space to fit two minifigures. There's also a little steering wheel and a switch right there. The steering wheel is clipped on so you can move it up and down. And if you look really closely, or stick your hand in there and carefully remove this. There's a one by two tile of this dashboard. But putting that back into place and putting the ceiling on once again, let's take a look at the last part of the vehicle. And that is the roof. And the design for this is pretty well built, not only with some little designs like these wheels being used just for extra detailing, but at the top, I love this piggy shooter. This uses a nice amount of pink pieces, which is always great getting in a Lego set. These one by one plates right here have an exclusive printing on the side of the plate. This can rotate because it is on a little swivel connection and you can rotate it both 180 degrees. The design of this does have the stud shooter at the front. How that's triggered is all you have to do is move this back area. So are you guys ready for a barrage of studs? I'm shooting it right at me. Let's do it. Okay, <laughs> that launched pretty well. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot you can move the ears up and down. But either way, that's it for the food truck build. Now let's take a look at those other two vehicles. And those are two motorcycle builds, which are identical builds for the most part. I love getting this motorcycle frame in that coloring. I don't think it's come in any other sets in that color. You can fit one minifigure standing up on it. Now the difference is, is this particular one actually has a connection that's holding a box of peaches. You see? You see? I almost said pears. I almost said pears, but it's peaches. I know it. <laughs> and I knew it in the other review. I just misspoke, but whatever. The design of this is a sticker right here. And on the interior, you do have those really nice one by one tiles of the heart tile, which are these little peaches right here. I almost said pears again. 
And if that other motorcycle looks slightly different, well, that's because I had the weapons attached from that minifigure being held at the side. Each motorcycle has some clips, so you could do just that. But either way, that's it for the builds of the set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. The box for this is what, the $80 long box? Like this was used with that Galaxy Squad first wave big set that was orange. At the top, you could see that nice artwork from the show. And at the back of the box, there's a nice look at the set's play features. So overall, Pigsy's food truck is a fantastic set. It's something fresh because we haven't gotten a food truck of this scale before. Of course, it has that culture that Monkey Kid brings that I really love. Designs inside feel very authentic to a food truck, but also pretty kick-ass with what they managed to include in a secret HQ. I really kind of like the hidden aspects of this, which kind of harken to a hidden side feel, one of my favorite LEGO themes on the market. There's just little things that kind of annoy me, like the use of those unicorn pieces. But at the end of the day, I think this is actually one of the best priced sets out there for the LEGO Monkey Kid line. 70 bucks for everything included in a very strong build makes it stand out compared to some of the others, which do tend to feel a little bit overpriced. So I'd end up rating this one an A overall. I highly recommend this one. Fantastic build, some great minifigure selections, some great pieces as well. For a little improvements, I guess swap out some of those unicorn pieces and maybe they could have put one or two more minifigures, but compared to other Lego Monkey Kid sets, again, the value really is there. That's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.